They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. What's up, dudes? Well, yeah, here we are. We're in a new digital studio that Cho has chosen, so things look different. That's why, hopefully, it hits. What made you... Uh, yeah, we'll what, see. What, what, what got you on this, Cho? I was just doing some research, and uh, I, no I noticed that... Uh, so, like, this one, the the feature of it that hits, this might not hit for people, but, like, it records y'all locally, so your video is going to look as good in the end product as it looks to you on your screen, whereas, like, normally when you're recording like in the stream or whatever it's like compressed and shit so like it should look better and it's also recording all your audio locally which means if something screws up i can take the tracks individually and screw around with them there so you know so just, uh, it's recording us locally and uploading it to you so you can then mm -hmm, pull those to the cloud yeah well that's nifty all right yeah, who knows Hope my internet we'll can see. handle that so Everybody's back together for, well, now the second time in the past like four or five weeks. It's been a chaotic uh, run here on the well. What y'all do for the fourth? Um, I uh, wait. Me and the boys, like, you know, I got in the pool with the boys for a while, and then we um we, we can see the Burbank fireworks from our front yard, which oh, word. hits because yeah, because it's up there and it's like. I think it's called like the Starlight Bowl or something like that. It's this amphitheater up in the, like the mountains, and there's a you know it there's a shit there's one way in and out. There's a shitload of people up there. It's kind of a clusterfuck, but we can see them from here, so we just like watch them from the front yard. I also cooked out, but uh, like I'm currently trying to really buckle down and hone in mm -hmm. on these last like ten fifteen pounds. 15 20 whatever it is so i made and katie's also like on a diet so i made turkey burgers right Ooh! and i got myself all fired up for it i was like i was like nah it'd be fine you know i'll do like turkey burgers i won't do any cheese or mayonnaise i'll get some like hitting fancy dijon mustard you know because i do love dijon mustard and it's uh calorie free and i was like i'll get some hitting tomatoes and red onion and pickles and all that stuff, you know. And uh, I got those like sa sandwich thins. Oh yeah, and toasted those instead of like a regular bun. Like really health fooded it up and roasted some cauliflower and got a watermelon and balled out the melons, you know. And the boys, I got like I, I mean Benton had a turkey burger, but he didn't know it. And I put cheese and all that shit on his. And Bishop had a grilled cheese because he's a vegetarian and corn on the cob and stuff and anyway i was like hey yeah that'll all hit you know you can like you can you can game the system that way and it'll hit and it didn't it didn't really hit not, not, like, <laughs> not like bro a let fucking, me not like a cheeseburger hits i can tell you that much right now but, what 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 even close nice. wasn't even close yeah. to as good but what are you gonna do yeah, i made a ribeye well, basted it in butter mm -hmm. uh it was a huge one it was bone in so i like getting those i feel like they cook different and uh, me and Andy went to Smart Marks and hung out by the pool and drank way too much tequila. We got in an argument last night when we got home, and like ten minutes in, both of us were like, "What are we fighting about?" Like, <laughs> forgot. Yeah, me and Amber have had that before, and there's there's moments where Amber, uh, this is going to be shocking to y'all, but she drinks more than me, and uh, there will be some moments where we'll be arguing, and I can see there's like a little glimmer in her eye. And whenever she has that, I know that she's the type of drunk that she's not going to remember anything. And I can usually just be like, okay, if you just shut up right now, everything's going to be good. And the next morning she'll wake up and just be like, hey, baby, how are you? And I'm like, boom, she didn't remember shit. Also, Trey, let me change your life and make Thompson mad at the same time. Fuck the sandwich thins. There is... Um, I'll text you the brand later, but there's like keto bread and they make Hawaiian King's Hawaiian rolls at burger rolls that are keto. And if you toast them, I swear to God, dude, you can't fucking tell a difference. They're amazing. It'll change the whole game. For are you. they lower Fuck them sandwich? Things. My goal is not to be 
keto or anything, though. It's not about they're thirty keto. calories. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah dude. Well, that's just gr- that's incredible. They're just great all around. Well, Fifteen a piece. Yeah. So like it, the whole thing. Yeah. Like it's it's game changer. I ain't had regular bread in like almost a year. Don't miss it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I was making burgers, I don't think I the I, I wouldn't miss bread. I, I, honestly, I'm like. I like bacon and shit, but I'm not a huge bread has always been just the the vessel for the plate. The vessel right. for uh, you know, meat and vegetable and condiment and cheese delivery for me. And that's true for pizza. I always get like thin crust pizzas and stuff. I'm not a huge so but has, like with burgers. Has that changed like, for you? Something. So but like I probably won't touch those sandwich things again. Uh, hopefully has, hopefully has, Katie ate some, but has that not changed for you a little bit since you've gotten into baking a lot? No, I mean, I've said before, a lot of times the stuff I bake, I don't even eat. I I like, you know, I bake it for Katie and the boys and stuff, which she has forced me to stop doing because, you know, it's making her fat or whatever. Um, So, yeah. Do y'all do that thing I do where when you're the one that cooks, you end up not eating as much? No, I only with baking. And I don't have much of a sweet tooth, so I bake a lot of sweet stuff, so it doesn't bother me as much. But, like, I've heard a lot of people say that. Like, you know, I cook things. It's like by the time I'm done cooking, I don't even really want to eat. But no, I've never been like that. Well, I fucking have it. I probably go in harder than anybody else does when I get done cooking. Right. When, and it hits for when me I'm making, too. When I'm making like pasta, I taste it at so many different like steps through it mm-hmm. that by the time I'm done making it, I've eaten like an entire plate of pasta. You know what I mean? I eat the whole time I cook. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I eat... Yeah, I eat the whole time, and then when I'm done, I'm just like, well, I guess I'm I'm full. I don't know how. Usually eat again. You know, I want to be rude. Wrong. Yeah, right. Might as well eat again. Not to Did you, get too technical with y'all or anything on the, but like, do I sound all right to you guys? Yeah, you sound good. This whole time I sounded all right? Mm-hmm. I keep looking at my little, um, you know, whatever you call it, the little, uh, what do you call that? The green, yellow, levels? red bar Icon? levels. Thank you. Yeah. My levels over here are fucking me up. I feel like it looks like I'm hot. If I keep moving my mic down, no, it's, not really, not, it's not really changing anything. No, you're not hot at all. Okay. You sound really good. Okay, cool. All right. Well, sorry about that. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask if y'all, like, the 4th of July, if you thought that it's, like, I don't know. Weird this year? Yeah, if, if it's starting to feel, you know, different and whatnot. <laughs> hit hit less generally i used to fucking love the fourth of july i also used to get really defense not defensive but like a pet peeve of mine was always the whole the way like conservatives like act like they own patriotism and stuff right so i would wear and yesterday i did still i had to go to target you know i wore my fucking eagle flag shirt so it's a bald eagle it made out of an american flag i used to rock shit like that all the time because I was like, fuck that. You know, you can be a liberal queer and still love this country or whatever. And I'm still doing it, but it's like, I just don't feel as, you know, rah, rah, America, uh, uh, at present. No, I'm with you. I saw that tweet that you put out yesterday and, uh, I definitely agreed with it, but the only difference for me is that like, I'm, I'm in Georgia, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, so I celebrated with my family and like everybody that I saw is wearing their, you know, standard, uh, red, white, and blue uniform. So it didn't feel no different down here. Now I feel like if I was in a group of like-minded individuals, we would probably be commiserating on the decline of civilization. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially with the last couple of weeks, it just seems like, uh, I don't know if America deserves for us to give it a birthday right now. I, yeah, the tweet you're talking about and hell, I maybe should have gone back and deleted it now that I think about it. But like, I, I just got in there and tweeted that and it was something like, it feels like, you know, when you got a friend who's strung out on drugs or who's really off the rails and you wake up on their birthday and you think right. to yourself like, Oh God, what are they going to do today? <laughs> like it's going to be really yeah. bad today because it's their birthday and they're out of control. It was something like that. And I put it out there. And then like within an hour, I saw that there had been a mass shooting in Chicago yeah. already. And yeah, and which is like, fits that whole analogy or metaphor you know to the to, it's a very raven thing uh, to, oh, to yeah. have to have happened but uh but yeah it's just you know shit like that 
It was it was a, a little suburb outside of Chicago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Evanston. Because because I'll be honest Park. with you, and I know this is shitty, but like when I first heard there was like there was a shooting in Chicago, like just went right over me because I was just like, yeah, I mean, there's a shooting in Chicago every day. But I, you know, then I found out like it was at. Am I to understand it was at like a Jewish parade? I don't know for sure. I, I, I think I that's just saw that you know it had happened and then they canceled the rest of the festivities for, I thought it was like a July 4th thing, but I, I don't know the, you know, demographics of the community or nothing like that, but it was, was definitely a, that, like lone shooter type situation where, you know, like right. I know what you mean. You see like a Chicago mass shooting. You're like, was that like, you know, gang, gang related? Violence? Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Sometimes that, cause I've seen, this does not excuse it at all. Both are really bad, but I've seen it pointed out a lot. Sometimes people post statistics of mass shootings in, in America or whatever, and people see that and they think of the lone shooters at the schools and stuff, but a whole lot of them are not that. That's also right. like fucking rival gangs and drive-bys and shit. But again, it's all fucking terrible and none of it should be happening. But yeah, they get conflated sometimes. But the one yesterday was one of those, you know, lone maniac types. Yeah, he looked pretty rough, man. Uh, he he uh he had that uh what was the kid in uh in uh oh god dang it. Uh Denver or whatever. Not Denver, but you know that Colorado movie theater Aurora. shooting. They've got the yeah. they've all got them same eyes, man. Like these like they're like they don't even have pupils. It's just a big old yeah. black yeah. like that like a doll's eyes. As, yes, as it's the guy insane in jaws. Yeah, I don't know. We ain't gonna like they're on uppers. I mean that's how people like, you know, Go to Bonnaroo or whatever. You see yeah, right. With those big fucking pupils. I just always assumed that's what they were. They're fucking eating meth. Bath or salts. Staying up all night. Yeah. It's wild because I've always thought that those people's brains were just like naturally in a state of mm -hmm. the type of Maybe mania that I someone's mean, all you know. Right. Somebody's fucking twacked out at Bonnaroo on stuff that. Some people's brains are just almost like that all the fucking time, which is like what's... Right, that's just their base. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe that's why their eyes look like that. Right. Because your pupils pulling back for something other than darkness has to do with, um, I want to say, adrenaline coursing through your body. That would also could be check wrong out. About that. But that's, I think it's, so you, it's like it's a defense mechanism. The adrenaline pumps into your body and certain other chemicals, you can see more clearly when they get bigger like that. Uh, I mean, I want to, on the subject of Bonnaroo, fucking lighten, lighten the mood a little bit. I, you know, yeah, please. What's, uh, how'd that go? Paul Cawthon is a genius. Um, oh, dude, he's the man. I want to see think, that show so bad. I, well, I think the way I would, like, I made notes that night. I was on drugs to talk to y'all about it. I think if, like, Wheeler is 80% comedian, but, like, he still knows that he has to make good music, so he's 20% musician. Mm -hmm. I think Cawthon is the flip-flop of that. I think that a lot of his songs are satirical. I know they're self-aware. He's got a song called um, uh, Fuck You Money that is yeah. legitimately one of the funniest songs of all time. It's a Wheeler Walker song with like a little bit less, you know, dick jokes or whatever. And then there's some more obvious ones that I think, um, is it Rednecker Than You is... Yeah, songs. he's got that one. And so that was so clearly satire or whatever. Yep. And then even Cocaine Country Dancing, you listen to it and you're like, this is all persona based. And But he sounds like Elvis. And he has very serious songs that are great. He has songs about like living in a cabin with his baby that are real heartfelt and, you know, sad. He's got heartbreak songs. So he's a serious musician and songwriter. Well, I wrote down in my notes and I was on drugs and a little full of myself, but He's an answer to a question that I hadn't been asking, which is what is alternative country's mm -hmm. problem? And it's that it takes itself too goddamn seriously. Right. And I love all of those artists in that genre, but you see them fighting on Twitter over like, I can't believe people would call themselves outlaw country and taking shots at each other. You see a lot of them, other than Sturgill Simpson, who doesn't take himself he, he, sometimes I think Sturgeon takes himself super seriously, and sometimes I don't when he shows up outside of CMAs, you know, and it's like obviously very funny. But Paul Cawthon is like, hey, 
being the alternative to bro country doesn't mean we can't have fucking fun. Right, exactly. And sing about drugs and NASCAR. And then also, the show was incredible. The Turnpike Troubadours could not follow them. Turnpike hasn't played in seven years. I've never been more excited about a show. And I just didn't care. I couldn't care. Paul Cawthon had taken all of my care. Really? It was, it was probably the best show at Bonnaroo on a Thursday night out in the camps. Not even inside. So, but there were right. other great shows at Bonnaroo. We I've talk talked about. about. Well, hang on, I got a question right after this. So we've talked about it on here recently. I mean, it's been a couple months, a few months ago, probably. But I brought it up a couple times for sure about how I've got uh, early onset papaw uh, when, it, <laughs> yeah. when it comes to music in particular. That I just haven't. <laughs> I have. I cannot be arsed, as the uh, they say across the pond, to even attempt to care about any new music or musicians for months, maybe more than a year now. Uh, it's a, it's a real thing with me. So I have no idea who you're talking about. I don't think I've <laughs> ever heard of this person or I've you've never Paul heard cocaine country dancing. Cause it's pretty cocaine. Good, like, kind of, it kind of crossed mm-hmm. over. Yeah. He's got that voice. I thing, thought thing. I could have sworn that me or Drew had played that for you. Cause like, no. dude, he's, yeah, he's the song. shit. And I went cause of that song. And I, I liked it, and I'd heard some of his other stuff and liked it pretty good, but I'd never heard "fuck you, money." I mean, I thought it was you're great. saying it alt was country. Corey says he sounds like Elvis. Is it like, is it like a rockabilly thing? That, that, that's just how his vo- his voice literally like the the series like cocaine country dancing for me. Like he's just got that kind of like Elvis swag. You know what I mean? He had so much okay. swag live too. For the record, uh, it's like Waylon Jennings. Elvis mm-hmm. and Hank Jr. That's pretty perfect. Well, shit. Yeah. And All it's right. great. And the albums are good, but live is how you got to, I have learned how you got to take this guy. And I might be completely wrong. Like, he, his self-awareness might have a limit to it because I've heard stories. He is cousins with the girl who runs WDBX there in Knoxville. Uh, Trey, where we did that sketch and they did yeah. all the Americana stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, they're first cousins. And she's had him on and hung out with him before. And the rumor around Knoxville is like, like he goes into a bar and like throws money onto the bar, but he won't let nobody talk to him, but he buys everybody's shots. So he's either trying very hard to keep up this weird persona or he might have started believing it. But anyway, right. it was it was a rad country music show out in a field. And uh, we did some cocaine country dancing and it was a good time. That well, was seems probably like- my favorite show. I don't know that he has like a much of an online presence. I'm sure that he has people that run socials because you like literally have to, but like he, there's like a, a, an aura of mystery around this guy, which is like, you know, kind of like the old rocks. Exactly. Like he's living the gimmick, which like, you know, uh, I'm not for like, you know, don't, don't live the gimmick so much that you're like doing heroin and, and Coke and dying. But like, I love the thought of this guy, like, don't talk to me, but I'm buying everybody shots like that fucking rules. But but yeah, man, like I remember several years ago, our mutual buddy, Danny Pye's cousin, Zach, he told me about this guy and he saw him at like Basement East in Nashville when he was just getting rolling. And he's like, man, I'm telling you, this guy's about to be huge. This is the best goddamn show I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, he's he's on the blow up. Trey, you got to you got to holler at it, dude. You'll love it. Well, um, I sure will try some to. Some other people, though, that Papaw will recognize the names of. J. Cole Murder. I mean, Jayco? people who had yeah. no idea who he was were like, what the fuck is happening? And what I realized with J. Cole, because Andy likes him a lot, and Andy doesn't like a lot of rap, and I don't think this was on purpose. I think it might have been a little bit of luck, but um, basic white people can understand every word he says. Yeah. He has one of the clearest flows in rap. Yeah, Dude. It's not slow, but the words don't run together. J. Cole right. is probably I probably he's probably top five, definitely top ten Bonnaroo sets I've ever seen. And I saw him in a tent on a Thursday night before his first actual album came out, mixtape J. Cole in like two thousand. You know who he was? Yeah, hell yeah. Only but only because only because he had been on the lineup, and I used to do that every single year. Anybody on the lineup I didn't know, I would check them out and say, "Who?" This is the type of shit I yeah. used to do, and I'm saying I can't. Yeah, right. ima- I, that's like homework <laughs> to me now. Think about that. I'm yeah, like, oh right. my god, who's got fucking time for that? But yeah. I used to do that every year, 
And I, he was on it on the undercard way down there again, Thursday night tent act. But I found him and I was like, this dude fucking rules. And again, he only had mixtapes out then like the, the warm up, the blow up Friday night lights. And I fucked with all of them. And that show was awesome. So every like J Cole hit or whatever was two years plus from being released at that point. And he fucking right. murdered. I've, and I've only seen him that one time, but I assumed you know, that now that he's massive and has a whole catalog, an entire oeuvre of hits, that it would be yeah. pretty incredible. So, yeah. Damn, he's been to Bonnaroo a lot because he was there the year that me and you went, Drew, and I had I missed it because of a wedding, and those people are now divorced, <laughs> so I couldn't be more mad. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's yeah, you'll have that. level. I mean, he's, uh -huh. he's one of those where they enjoy him, they enjoy having him there, and he's, he's proven he can do the festival thing. Some of my favorite moments that I can share. Let me say this. I got recognized more than I've ever been recognized. Uh, one time, one particular person saw me as I was sprinting out of the Mark Ribelay show trying to find Brian so I could get back into it. Mark Ribelay is that guy who loops yeah. and sings about butt sets. Yeah. And I, I was yeah, I like that guy. That guy is. I guess just <laughs> I was definitely in stuff, pink <laughs> panties. Like I was yeah. in pink panties on drugs. And people were like, Drew. And I was like, nope. So whoever that was, I was like, not now. Uh -uh. <laughs> I felt vulnerable, and I was not ready to deal with that. But one guy hung out, took pictures. Uh, he was like, um, hey, for Father's Day, we're sending pictures of nice butts to our dads. Can we take a picture of you talking to Andy, you know, asking both of us or whatever? She was like, yeah, that's fine. She had on, like, chaps with, like, a, you know, Andy's gotten into the festival girl thing. It used to be that we yeah, just yeah, wore yeah. fucking bathing suits, the same one every day, and now she has two different outfits per day. But anyway, took a picture. I'm, like, beside her butt, giving a thumbs up. I see the dude the next day at Zach Bryan, who was phenomenal. And I'm oh, like, yeah. yo. Oh, yeah. Can I get that picture, dude? You know, thanks for dancing with us last night. Actually, it was technically this morning, let's be honest about it. The sun was coming up. And he go, yeah, man. And he's pointing out, and his girl's there, and they're talking, and they're drunk, clearly. And he goes... Yeah, man, uh, seeing you dance like that hit like a motherfucker for me. And I was like, and he was like, oh, yeah, I listened to the podcast. And I was like, you're telling nice. me you hung out with me all night. You took pictures of her. We danced together. And you didn't even let on like you knew me. And now I just got your phone number. But he was cool as fuck, dude. He was what a so great cool fan. about it. I was like, thank you. Because in the state that I was in last night, a few people were like, Drew. And I was like, I can't, I can't fucking do this. Like, I'm on, uh, you know, hallucinogens or whatever. It's not going to be good. So that was fucking cool. Um, so that was one of my favorite had, moments. Isaiah, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I had somebody recognize me one time, and I pulled the whole gimmick of, they go, are you Corey, Corey Forrester? And I go, you know, I get that all the time, which I do every now and then, and they legit just walked off. They're like, oh, my bad, and they just fucking <laughs> left. So if you, you could pull that if you want to, but yeah. Isaiah, you saw Isaiah Rashad? Uh, yeah, it was a pretty good show. His voice was hoarse, like you could tell. You know, he sings as much as he raps. Oh, yeah. But he got the key to the city. The the mayor of Chattanooga, your mayor, came up, or your adjacent oh. neighbor, ne mayor, uh, neighbor mayor, uh, came up and. Gave I don't him even know who it city. is anymore. That's Tim cool. Kelly. Is he a lunatic? Okay, that sounds about right. <laughs> I don't, I don't think know. So I think he's like. Uh, yeah. What was the governor we had before the lunatic we have in Tennessee? Uh, Phil Bredesen. The governor. No. Haslam. Yeah. Haslam. I think he's like Haslam, where he's like he's. Been oh, I didn't know those guys still existed. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, those guys anyway, he gave him like the key to the city, and Isaiah now. Rashad's mama cried. <laughs> uh, That's sweet. Which was cool. It, it was a good show. And then I have one of those moments that it always happens every Bonnaroo. You never know what it's going to be. There's this guy named Slow Tie. He's a British rapper. S Slow Tie? Yeah, and it's T-A-I, like the... Oh. I wanted to say country, but that's Thailand. You know what I'm... The people. Um, yeah, right. And my buddy Adam is like, this is my favorite rapper. He's British. No one will go with me. It's like three in the afternoon. It was on one of those fucking hot days. It was really hot at Bonnaroo this year. Will you yeah, go? And I was rough. like, I'll fucking go, dude. Sure. And I listened to some of the stuff. And it was, it's like real angry rap. Like his biggest song is called Psycho. And he's got somebody famous <clears throat> featured on it. And I can't even remember who right now. And I was like, so is this guy like the most famous British rapper? And he's like, basically, yeah. Like he's crossed over a little. So I show up, and Filipino but British DJ is on stage. <laughs> he has on long shorts. I swear to God, from a distance, it looks like the same goddamn tattoos. Yeah. He moves just like DJ moves. 
Yo, 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 <laughs> He's got this beautiful white mansion on this 3D screen behind him. And as the show progresses, the house just starts falling apart. And then he's, and then a cartoon of him sets it on fire at one point. We got up in the pit. <laughs> That's it was very a cartoon DJ. of himself flying by the Setting yeah. the house on, on fire, fire behind him yeah. while he raps yeah. Psycho and stuff like that. It, it it crushed. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen across all. It was probably my five or six favorite Bonnaroo sets of all time. We moshed. I got dust all in my mouth. And he mm. murdered every song. And then... He was like, I couldn't understand him. You know, he's like, this moat right here. I was like, what the fuck is happening? He was saying to some kid, it seems like you know all my songs. Do you know whatever the next song is? Just brought a dude on stage. It was this fat little redheaded boy with a big old beard. He looked like a little gnome. And this dude spit every <laughs> fucking bar with him. The mic was hot. The kid had Is he British? Then, nope. And he was Southern. He had a fucking redneck accent, and then the kid went crowd surfing, and they surfed him all the way back. And then when he landed, I swear to God, a girl just started making out with him. Yeah. And I was like, nice. that kid just had the best day of his life, hands down. He shouldn't even get married now. He's never going to top this. No doubt. Yeah. I've been jealous of you for about a week, but not because you went to Bonnaroo, but because you still want to. Like, I'm jealous of that. <laughs> About you, you, should, you should like try drugs. No, I know, but I was thinking I was like, man, you should go this year. Like you don't have any anything else going on. Like just go. And I just couldn't bring myself to be away from home for an extended period of time when I'm not getting paid. Well, it's too What's it your... was too hot. If this makes you feel any better, we got invited to Burning Man, not for free, but for like as cheap as is possible. And it's always been something I've wanted to do. And on day two of Bonnaroo, I texted those people and said, I'm not fucking coming because it was yeah, so hot. Do the idea of doing that, because Burning Man's like eight or ten days. The idea of doing it for more than four makes me want to kill myself. Oh, eight, dude, or, eight ten or ten days. Uh -uh. Damn. But also, yeah, Corey, I'd be dehydrated. I, I, don't I had three I RVs and an air conditioner oh, in my. So like, then, let me just yeah. say, like, I don't do Bonnaroo that is like different. I used to and would not. Yeah, right. Yeah, because when me and you went that last time, like, don't get me wrong. We found enough drugs, and it was the first Bonnaroo I'd ever been to, that, like, I did have a good time. But, buddy, when I got home, I'm not kidding. Mm. I ha It took me three showers to get my feet clean, like three full scrubbing showers to get my feet clean. I was dehydrated. I didn't take a single shit the whole uh -uh. time I was there, I which, granted, did. I, I didn't eat a lot, right. so it makes sense. But, like, I mean, I was just... Then that was, you know, we were, I was 28 then. Me now, I would never recover. Like, I would, I would still be fucked up. I went to well, they, five they were, in a row. I tent camped every time, never had an RV or nothing. The last one was 2013. Uh, and so I was 27. Is that right? That don't seem right, but I guess that's right. Yeah. yeah. God damn, that was nine years ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was 27, and at 27, that one, and now that's the hardest I've ever gone. That was the year my dad died, and Paul McCartney was there, so it was like, right. it was a whole thing Woof. for me. Uh, but, like, in a hitting way, I was so fucked up the whole time. And, uh, and that one at 27, I'm not exaggerating at all, it took, like, six days for me to like get over it when I when I mm -hmm. came back like I, I had to like almost like detox like I was sick like I, yeah. I felt bad real real bad for almost a full week after that last one and, and I kind of knew before I even went I was like this is my last hurrah I think but then I came yeah. back and I and that's how it went down and I was like yeah man I'm done uh, I think for the foreseeable future I might go with an R, a hit an RV set up or something but I'm not planning well, it on it. It changes everything. Sure. And, and the for other sure. thing that's different, that's like, you know, me getting older is like, I went to see Zach Brown in the middle of the day on the last day, but I had been asleep for 10 hours, you know, when I woke up and went. And I went with my friend to see that slow tie show. I didn't know other daytime shows. Like in mm -hmm. the evening, like I didn't come out till like 6.30. Yeah, I had right. no problem with that. I slept in that RV. I took showers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there was no, but I, um, I did Birmingham the Wednesday after 
my Mike Cooley came. Uh, everyone who came to Birmingham, thank you for coming out. We had a great show. I did about 10 up top on Bonnaroo. Uh, actually, I like a lot of those jokes. Some of them are, weren't, you know, didn't have a shelf life. I could keep doing them. But in thinking about it that week, you know, because I was planning on doing some stuff up top about it, a lot of people, when they go to Bonnaroo or they see pictures of it, it's like, man, these people look like animals. And what I've realized as I've gotten older and keep going back is like, that's what I like about it. Like, I like right. it, like, day three, I'm not at all the same person. Like, the yeah, amount sure. of dirty that I am, I would not ever be comfortable being, even in my own house. No. Right. But Hell just, not. like, there, I don't notice it. And something about that, all that appeals to me. Because at some point, you're just like, it's like the first day, you're like, oh, is that your water bottle? Is that my water bottle? And then, like, day two, you're like, I don't give a fuck whose water bottle it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, germs? Look yeah, at us. That ain't yeah, right. and that all we've got it. Me. Whatever it is, we got it. Yeah, you're you're eating, you're sleeping, you're partying, and you know if you have a place to, you're fucking, and that's all you're doing. Like that's all there is to do for three or four days. I like that. I like becoming an animal for a few days, but you know only for a few days. And some people have no interest in that at all. I just it's with me like I just have to accept this. Like I have a problem with alcohol, but it's not. I don't mean that I have an addiction with alcohol. My problem with alcohol is that it torments me for so long, even if I do it one time, that I just, like, like I, the other day, like a week ago, I shot up out of bed, and I was like, oh, I'm finally over Europe. And we've been home for like a month, but I was just, like, mentally fucked up. Like, it took me so long to, like, get back to good. And it's because of the booze. And, like, now if I drink, if I get drunk one night, I know that I'm beating a dead horse. We've talked about this a lot, but like, it's not just that I'm hung over the next day for like a solid week. It takes my brain like five or six days to start functioning properly again with like the uh, endorphins or like whatever the fuck it is. So like Bonnery would just straight up kill me now. Yeah. I think the other thing I should mention that's worth mentioning is Andy and I are going to start trying in earnest, uh, like really trying to have kids. We haven't been not trying lately, but we're going to just like really try in, in October. And then like not to bring it back down to a sad thing, but going back to like the 4th of July and like not really feel like celebrating and all this stuff. Like Seems like the last one. There's a weird thing in my brain where I'm like, becoming a dad slash this descent into fascism we seem to be doing. Mm -hmm. There's this weird thing going on with me. I've been talking about it on um, Into the Abyssin, like, I just been wanting to party and like, it's not super yeah. healthy because that thing you're talking about, like I'll go through it. I'll have the weekend. Bonnaroo brought me down. I barely drink at all. When we did Birmingham, I had one beer with Cooley cause it's fucking Cooley, but I didn't hang out. I drove back to your house. I slept like five hours. I went right back home. But then that next weekend, my brain was right back to like, yeah, fuck it though. Like, yeah, yeah you right. are going to feel like shit, but like, fuck it though. And my twenties weren't like yours. I was in law yeah, school. Yeah, for sure. I was, yeah. you know, uh, two IPAs on the weekend. I didn't do any drugs. So, like, I think there's a part of me that's like, get it out while you can. Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, son. yeah, yeah. I'll well, tell my, some of my friends like that all the time that, like, they're, you know, some of them are divorced, so they're, like, re-partying now, you know? Yeah. And uh, they'll be like, I don't know why you want to hang out. And I'm like, well, do you remember when we were in our 20s, how you were versus how I was? I've done it. Like, I've, I did it. Like, you were not doing those things. I partied for a long time. And frankly, I it's going to kill me if I keep doing it. And also, like, I'm bored with it. Like, I did that shit. Like, I like waking up now and feeling good. Yeah. I found that, uh, so when I'm at home, don't drink. I have no desire to. It's been that way for a long time. The road remains different, but right now I'm touring alone. And one thing I've noticed, it's not surprising, is it's much, much easier for me. I'm not blaming anybody here. It is my fault. But like when I'm alone, mm -hmm. I have no, I don't, show's over. I go to my hotel. I'm drinking right. water and Gatorade and that's it. I'm not bringing right. beers up to the room. Hey, let's, uh, let's fucking watch a movie. We're not having let's, a podcast. Let's talk about how much and... we hit or let's record a podcast or whatever. <laughs> like I'm not doing any of that. And I'm on Pacific time and I'm usually on the East coast or whatever. So the show's over at 10, that's seven o'clock for me. I'll stay right. up for five more hours, you know, yeah. 
and then uh, go to bed at like three in the morning Eastern time, which is 12 Pacific. That's about the time I normally go to bed. By then I've completely sobered up. I've been drinking nothing but water. I wake up the next day, get up, work out and get in the car and drive to the next town or whatever. And I feel completely fine and it doesn't bother me at all. So like, and when I'm, like I said, when I'm at home, I don't, I don't drink nothing. So like, I'm totally cool on the, uh, on the booze front right now. Like I've, got a real good handle on it uh in my own personal opinion so um and then yeah then that and so if i'm not on the and I, people listening who have either come to the shows or might want to come to the shows i don't get hammered for the shows or nothing but i have it's almost like a ritual i have at least a couple of drinks because it just, you got to, it just loosens me up and trust me y'all if you're at the show it makes the show better than it would Dude, otherwise you be gotta have if i'm sober for sure judge, especially because i'm doing a whole bunch of new material right now and like if i if i've had a couple of drinks and i fuck one of those new jokes up or i forget a line or something i'm just like fuck it and move on yeah right whereas right. if i'm sober and that happens because i have done it that way if i'm sober and that happens i get in my head i'm like ah shit and, and it just fucks me up more than it otherwise would so trust me it's not uh i'm not being irresponsible uh <laughs> you guys will still no, still when, come and have a good time and i believe you'll enjoy it more for me having my couple of a uh, couple of drinks beforehand the difference is used well, to afterwards again we'd have a podcast or something i keep drinking now on the solo tour i'm not i'm not doing that so i'm not hung over i'm not feeling like shit generally on the road yeah when we had that when me and you had that real problem with sobriety uh, that we were going through um, right before we recorded the special, uh, I was I felt great, right? You know, all the time. But I did notice on stage, I was like, I was just tighter and like yeah. not tight in a good, not tight no. in a good way. Like you, you want your set to be right. tight, but you want to be yes. loose doing yes, it. Yes. Like the, you want the set to be so tight right. that you can just hang out and fuck around and like I'm gonna go over here for a second and I know I'm coming back to here but when you are completely sober there's no let's just do this let's just I don't not for I don't have it not in me, me. Yeah, no, right. not for me at least yeah not for me at least right. and so like finally I was just like you know out of respect for the audience I'm gonna start drinking again yeah that's just, I mean that's how that's I felt just the yeah, I mean we it, talked it, about it because I felt the yeah. exact same way and I did that and I have felt like it was the right move this whole time. <laughs> and yeah, I still I agree feel that with you. Way. I haven't gone back I, on you, it at all. You changed my life, man. Like it, it really high, made. Take the test high. Yeah, that's for sure, dude. That is for goddamn sure. I know we've talked about this one here before, but I believe the term for that is encoding specificity. How about mm -hmm. that? That's all we're doing. Yeah, encoding specificity. Yeah. Um, uh, I had I don't a, know how to segue back, but Corey, I sent you a picture of slow tie that if you can on the chat, if you can share that, I do want, mm -hmm. no, no, I sent it in this chat on this thing. Oh, where you know this had a share chat. Oh, there it real is. Real quick before we, uh, I've, on. uh, it's so, oh fuck. I left. I have a thing. No, you still here. If you can hear us. Okay. You still seem to be here. I had a thing I wanted to bring up and talk to y'all. I actually, it was, I put it in the group chat the other day, but Drew, I think you were at Bonnaroo maybe or something. I don't know if you saw it. Um, but yeah, uh, before we get out of here, but we can look at this picture first. I don't know if I know how to do it. Wait. Yeah, I do. Okay. Cause I do want to see this guy. So you yeah, say he's I Filipino, mean, so he's not Thai. So he's not calling think, himself a slow Thai. Oh, I might have been racist. Literally. Somebody told me he was Filipino, but now that I'm thinking about it, that don't make no sense. <laughs> well, if it's T A I, a Thai person is T H A I. So if his is T A I and with no H, no, it's maybe T H A I. It's, oh, is it? Okay, all right. Well, then, yeah, um, I, must, I would assume he's Thai. Then <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I, I don't know where I got that. Yeah. Can y'all see that? Oh yeah, that yeah, I definitely see the DJ there. That's, Look at DJ, dude. <laughs> Sweet, I figured out how to do it. He moves like him, yeah. <laughs> and he kind of spits like him too. <laughs> and he definitely has his spirit, like his impish fucking spirit. He's younger yeah. and angrier. I mean, it kind of reminds me of old DJ. Like that guy made party. me realize. I don't. Maybe we've said this about DJ before, but I can't remember thinking this about DJ. And I know this almost sounds nonsensical, but I feel like DJ is like something about DJ. Yeah, right. But he's like he's like a sweet trailer Joker. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Dude, specifically the Jared Leto yeah, one. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, in looks. Like, yeah. In yeah. looks. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's why I said sweet. The Joker's very not sweet, but he is chaotic. Yeah. Right. He, so it's like 
you know, like if the Joker was sweet instead of evil, but still just as like yes. uh, chaotic Same. as he is, right? Then it, you know, because he's definitely impish. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's how you get DJ. But I never thought that until that picture got pulled up. So I've I've ra- I, I've like subconsciously thought it because every single time I see the Suicide Squad poster or something with Jared Leto in it, I go, "That's DJ with green hair." <laughs> So <laughs> let me uh before we move on, let me do like a quick few things just because I know that people care. Uh, Zach Bryan, I mentioned it is great. He's the real fucking deal. I was texting BJ. I was like, this kid. He's like, I know his band's great. The songs were great. He was better than I expected him to be. That kid's the real deal. Uh, Tool and Pussifer were incredibly. I don't. I don't think. I'm oh, they were both. Of, they were both there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Maynard is just hilarious. He's, and he's Tool something else, man. Was. Awesome. Stevie Nicks still got it. Like, uh, unbelievable. It was so good. And then the various DJs, I like some of them, but then you never know. You know what I mean? You're like, well, maybe it was. Yeah, but I always (laughs) felt like, right. I always felt like in that scenario, like those guys, I wouldn't just put their shit on in my headphones, but at Bonnaroo on drugs, middle of the night, they pretty much all smash for me. I've never been to one of those shows that didn't hit for me in that context you know well there's a lot pretty more lights is one of the best goddamn shows i've ever seen in my entire fucking dude life. i guarantee course, i was out of my mind and it was yeah, 2 right. a.m or whatever but it was unreal sts well, nine too was great but was too much it had a, like a lot of harsh you know and I, I didn't dig that there was someone called it was either head chatter or chatterbox at where in the woods who we realized halfway through the set they were singing like the mix wasn't just a track; they were DJing while actually singing, and that was that was that was really. Oh, cool. that's wild! Yeah, and it was. A good yeah, show. I've, never seen, I've never seen. I've never that. seen nothing like that. But I respect. Do y'all know that. the Suicide cool. Boys? No. Someone described them to me, and I was like, "That sounds horrible. It sounds like emo yeah. rap or metal rap." It was Mexican pirate raps, what it looked like, because they had a skull <laughs> with a bandana tied in the front. Uh, I couldn't see their faces. I don't know if they're Mexican, but the, you know how like the cholos tie the bandana in the front. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm talking about gangster movies yeah. from the '90s. They had that, and it looked like a musical. It was on the witch stage, and it was awesome. So anyway, that was my. I just want to do a quick rundown. These are people who hit for me, especially Zach Bryan and Paul Cawthon. That does. Yeah, hit. dude, Cawthon's the fucking man. Uh, and Toby and Gawe. I said his name all fucked up, but um, that guy who says, uh, try Jesus, don't try me because I throw hands. I thought he was just like nice. a TikTok star because that was funny. Nope. He's like a whole thing. It looked like a cult. And, and I mean, on purpose. He made oh, a green. It was cool. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Like um, he just said, hey, if you're coming to see me at Bonnaroo, wear green. No, no, no. He had like 30 singers on stage and his whole family, oh. including his children, and they were wearing green. And his wife is his backup singer. And uh, he has a real positive message. I don't know if he is actually in a cult, but it was awesome. Yeah, right. Uh, all right, it's a little early for this, but still, I think it's uh, we're we're in good enough shape to say. I'll ask. I want to bring it up right after this break. So, Cho's gonna know immediately what I'm talking about because we were texting about it the other night. But I do think it's wild. Preface this by saying it is not my intention to shit on any person involved with this story it's a bunch of famous people involved with it i just think it's worth reflecting on and sort of fits the general theme of this podcast i know we all remember it's wild the impact that this article had because i've met so many people i've met so many people who share a sensibility or taste of music or whatever over the years with me and i swear to god every one of them has read this same magazine Mm -hmm. article from 2009, which is a real testament to it, I think. But I know we've all read Ethan Hawke's Rolling Stone profile of Chris yep. Christopherson. Uh, he wrote in 2009. Again, everybody that I know that likes alt country, American or whatever, has all read it and all loved it, right? So, a couple of things. In that, it's a profile of Chris Christopherson. It could not possibly make him sound like a more badass motherfucker. Now, of course, he is very much a badass motherfucker. He's a Rhodes Scholar and a fucking Army vet and all this stuff. G- literal genius and also a songwriter and a hitting actor and just one of the hitting uh, yeah, right. motherfuckers that's ever walked the face of the earth. And Ethan Hawke's profile gets that across pretty well. It also has some sort of political elements to it, which, of course, hit for me at the time. And like country music politics 
too. So there's a couple mm-hmm. of things involved. There's this famous part of it where he says there, there, that he was there and they were backstage at some music festival or it was Willie Nelson's birthday or something like that. It was Willie Nelson's birthday, and yeah, 77th so there's birthday. there's all these country stars there. Toby Keith was there, and according to according to Ethan Hawke, Toby Keith walked by and said, hey, none of that lefty shit out there tonight, Chris. And Chris Christopherson grabbed him and threw him up against the wall. I was like, what'd you say to me, motherfucker? I'll whip your ass or whatever, basically. And then after that, compared Toby Keith to a quote that he said Waylon Jennings made about Garth Brooks, which was... That dude did for country music what uh, uh, pantyhose did, did for finger, for finger fucking. fucking, right? And so, great line. This is like the hiddenest part of the whole article, right? Because at that point, this is after like we'll put a boot in your ass, or whatever. A lot of people who are of our cut from our cloth were already like fuck Toby Keith at this point in time, you know, uh, for not, f- but you know what I mean. It's like yeah, he ain't hitting for me, and it just checked a lot of boxes and it hit for a lot of people. Then I find out years, like years later, I heard somewhere online. And then I asked our buddy W Earl Brown. I don't think he'll mind me saying it. W Earl Brown no, who knows, who knows Chris Christopherson personally. Cause he like wrote a movie that Chris starred in and they've worked and together. Toby Keith and, and he knows Toby Keith very well too. So I heard something and I asked Earl about it and he confirmed that it was totally true. And that something is that apparently Ethan Hawke, made pretty much all of that up and that none of that ever happened. And that Chris Christopherson's like, no, I got the utmost respect for Toby Keith and he hits for me. And I never would have said that. And Toby Keith was madder than fuck about it. Very I, understandably. Dude. So he was like, no, that's complete bullshit. And none of that ever happened. And like, I just, and he made up other things too. Like he apparently in there, he talked about Chris being a a helicopter pilot in Vietnam or something like that. And he was in the army, but he was never in combat. And none of that was true either. And he just made, he could fly a helicopter, but I know that because of that famous Johnny Cash story. So I guess he just conflated them. Well, he was like a pilot, but he was stationed in Germany during Vietnam or something like that. He he didn't have a combat role, but Ethan Hawke made it sound like he did. He's made all this shit up, and we were texting about it the other night, and it's like, dude, really thinking about that, like, it's insane. That is fucking why. That is a sociopathic crazy, crazy. insane. And Ethan Hawke has always smashed for me, and that article smashed for me. He hit I for me love, even harder after that. I love Ethan Hawke, but that is like, that is some wild shit to do because the people involved that you have to know you're making this shit up about. The right. people involved are super high profile people who are going to hear about this. They're going to have a platform to respond to it. And it's all it's being in Rolling done Stone. for an article in Rolling Stone. Like, yeah. it, it, you have to know that you're going to be outed eventually for like doing that. So to still make the choice to do that is like, that shit is, it's just, it's wild. And I just wanted Has to. Has he ever to, commented on it? I don't know. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I, or, I, I mean, I, the funniest or best response would be, "Well, I made my friend Chris look cool, and the person I made look bad, Toby Keith. I don't respect him as a person, an artist, or a human. And if he's got a fucking problem with it, come see me. That would be hilarious if he just came out because, yeah, because of. And the reason I bring it up that way is not to like make him sound cool, but like that is sort of what he's saying to Toby Keith. If you put that in Rolling Stone. It's like, I'm Ethan Hawke. I couldn't be higher profile in terms of who's writing a Rolling Stone article. He has to be the most famous person that's ever written a Rolling Stone actual article, not like an op-ed or whatever. So you're, you're kind of daring Toby to confront you, which does hit uh, Yeah, I know, but well, not for me, not in this instance, just because it's complete fabricated bullshit. Because, like, say what you will about Toby Keith, and I know that we all could, but, like, now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, dude, Toby Keith would never, to Chris Christopherson, no. say that shit. No. Like, dude. never. Never. In a, I don't think he would, I don't think he would say that to anybody, but if he did, it would well, be he, like, well, hold on. he's on. He wouldn't say it to anybody? He said it very publicly about the Dixie Chicks. He quite literally started that. So he'll say it to women. I'm, I mean, I'm about to say, I, no, I, no, 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 they're no, women, I'm though, trying to take know, No, like, no, no. Chris is a man. That's not, like, that's so not. That's completely different. He literally I'm saying, told him I'm to saying, shut up. 
and stop that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying he did. And that's he true. Wore shirts that said "fuck you, Toby." It said "f u t k." But well, what so. I was going to say was I could see him saying it to some, like hypothetically, if he's doing a show and he's got an opener, and maybe they have some political songs. I could see him going, "Hey, this is my show. None of that lefty bullshit." I could see that, but like, dude, it. This is a perfect I, point I you brought up. Yeah, I can see him say it to some. I don't think he'd say it to Chris Christopherson. No, I don't know. No. And well, first Me off, either. he didn't. Yeah, well, that, I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like, there's a difference between, and there shouldn't be, but there's a difference between him saying it to the Dixie Chicks and saying it to fucking Chris Christopherson's face. Yeah, like, he didn't say pussy. it to the Dixie Chicks' face. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, I'm not, I, I'm not saying I think this guy's a way more respectable person. I'm just saying, like, no one, because the what Ethan Hawke wrote in that is like afterwards, Chris Christopherson threw him up against a wall. Well, that didn't happen, but that is what would have happened right. had fucking Toby Keith done that shit. And Toby Keith is a lot of things, but stupid ain't one of them. Well, Chris, Toby Keith's huge. And I know Chris Christopherson is a certifiable badass, but I don't think 65-year-old Chris Christopherson could have handled Toby Keith like a rag doll. You know what I mean? Like Maybe. We should have all been a little suspect of that because also there's just like security around. I mean, I guess also, security would be like, I don't even know what to do, how to enter into this two famous people. But it like, just it just hit so hard that we had to believe it. Right. Like you know what I mean? It was just one of those things where yeah. we're like, Oh my god, and this it's is like fucking it's rad. like Ethan Hawk totally knew that too. It's like you know what I mean? It's like Yeah, there no one will question this. Right. And it did. That was what that's a huge part of what made the article hit so hard was because all that shit yeah, right. it was like pandering to people like us, you know, when that yeah, came oh, yeah, out. Big it was time. Like, it's like this is fucking awesome. And, Which and, is why and everybody like, read it, at, I guess, but like knowing that but, it was all we just as made an up, audience and I don't know if he gets credit for this or if it's luck. We as an audience barely existed then. And I don't mean we didn't exist, but like Isbell and Stapleton and all that stuff right. hadn't really happened yet. No. Pre-Twitter like, too. Right. Like knowing that there were people who would get real hype about that, who weren't just like, you know, they hate Toby Keith. You know what I mean? But like, no, people who actually love country music and love Christopherson. I mean, look, dude, fuck Ethan Hawke. But like, he did a good job. Oh, the article's awesome. It's just like, to what Trey said, like, I genuinely, it, it actually gets more crazy the more I think about right. it. Because, like, agree. I texted this in the group, I texted this in the group, and I mean it, if if it wasn't Ethan Hawke, and it was just like, you remember that Million Little Fibers dude? Like, if it was somebody no. like that, who, uh, uh, Oprah famously had him on, or not Million Little uh, Fibers, Million Little Pieces, Million Little Fibers yeah. was the parody they did on South Park with Towley. Um, he wrote <laughs> yeah, a book a called... A, <laughs> he pretended to be an addict, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He made all this shit up, and, like, Oprah gave her, you know, that was back when, like, if Oprah had you on the show with a book, you're fucking yeah. selling a million copies. Uh -huh. And it turns out that all of it was bullshit, but that guy was completely obscure. Right. And he was trying to hit and i understand some person like that like i'm just gonna put shit that hits out here and help. like i could see like a person who's like i just got my journalism degree and i really need to make a quick buck i'm gonna write this insane bullshit to rolling stone but, but like ethan hawk but not and about, it smashes your credibility uh, but also but doing it i don't i don't remember the million little pieces person but their story did not involve other like famous people right? no it was, it was just, just him. right yeah that also is a huge part like i can see somebody trying right. to make a name for themselves doing that too but not about hugely famous people who will be asked right. to respond to it inevitably and then when you add in the fact that it's a famous person doing it in the first place in a very high profile platform or whatever but Real quick, because you reminded me of it. One thing that one version of that that does kind of hit for me that I just found out recently, a version of the million little pieces thing, is I've just read on the internet the other day that uh, apparently, and I guess it's still a little bit disputed, but apparently now most people think that y'all know uh, Frank Abagnale from yeah, Catch Me If it, You Can. Yes, the I heard this too. Movie, yeah, all, the Steven Spielberg movie for that book about this guy who was like one of the most legendary con <laughs> men. Biggest con artist, One of the biggest yeah. con artists of all time who duped the FBI and duped all this shit. Apparently, he actually made all that up. <laughs> yeah. But that super hits that for rules. me. Yeah, because yeah, it's that's like, awesome. well, it's, you that's know, that's a do. con. Like, he, yeah, yeah he, right. he conned the whole world into believing he was the hitting his con artist con. of all time. So it's like, yeah, it's a metacon. So it's like, he kind of is one of the hitting his con artists of all time, <laughs> even though he made all that up. But yeah, so. And it was legal what he did because it's like, yeah, we made fiction here. 
I'm not. Do he to... still work for the FBI? I don't know. I mean, he got to be old. He as worked fuck for now. them very like, briefly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. As a consultant. Um, I just want to say real quick. I don't want to defend Ethan Hawke in general because I don't like that he did it. Like he tricked me. He tricked us. It, it, it was pointless, et cetera, et cetera. But the part you're talking about is the craziest, but is the only part that I like. The fact that he did it about famous people that he then has to go be around. Yeah, right. There's something about that where it's like, well, look, I mean, if you're fucking crazy enough to do that. I mean, the dude yeah. wrote a lie about Toby Keith, whose whole persona is, I will beat the fuck I'll out of you. I'll put a boot in your and ass. He's legitimately six foot four, 200 pound, and he doesn't like Hollywood liberals. That's another part of his persona. So for Ethan Hawke to be like, all right, I'll make up a whole lie about you getting your ass kicked, and I'm not anonymous. I'm going to go yeah, get right. Ethan Hawke out in the world. That part does kind of hit for me a little bit because it's like, all right, you, you hurt Toby the one way you knew you could. Like, right. This is a very specific way to hurt Toby Keith. It, it's psychopathic, but it hits for me that like you'll stand behind it. You, you will now I mean, go be in public. Could did Toby Keith sue him? Cause like he one hundred percent could. He wouldn't want it to be that. Would you know if Toby Keith sued Ethan Hawke and Rolling Stone, that would be in the news more, and then it would. Just yeah, be right. Like, uh, the the uh, Barbara Streisand effect or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but like, dude, like I again, fuck Toby Keith. But like, buddy, if I if it was me and I had to walk around knowing. That there's because a, a lot of people don't know that this is bullshit. Like they've read that, and that's that's it. That's the truth. If I had to walk around knowing that people thought that I insulted Chris Christopherson, I would be in a constant strain. Like all every day, I would have a sign on my head that just said Ethan Hawke made all that shit up, and I'd walk around with it all the time. Yeah, because that's definitely the worst part. I think for if you're Toby Keith is like the. I don't think he gives a shit about the like the you know the political aspect of it. It's right. that as a country music star, the Wait, idea that up. he would disrespect uh, Chris Christopherson to his Wait. face. Pause. So first of all, and I forgot this about the article. He doesn't say it's Toby Keith. No, which, that's true. Which, but but if so I that, recall correctly, so he makes it very clear that that's who he's talking. He about. says yeah. he he says I won't name names, but it's a guy who like wrote a song about but, putting but, your yeah, butt in an ass. Like, right. yeah. Well, like all that. I was gonna say it undercuts my like modicum of defense of him, which is like yeah, just fucking say what you mean, bro. But, yeah, right. Um, hold on, I'm I'm like reading this now. This is an old article, and it says. The Rolling Stones story brought a denial from Keith, and Christofferson himself has retreated from the situation. Actually, I like Toby Keith, but I don't agree with his politics, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things in our history that would transcend politics, and he says, I don't remember the exchange with Keith, but my wife does. Hmm. That's something that happened six years ago, and I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Wait, so are you suggesting what if Christofferson, although he's famously sober, like he's pretty famously hasn't had a drink in like thirty years. But he's also, you know, I mean, he w was old even then. Oh, yeah. so what you're suggesting is maybe it did happen, and Chris Christopherson maybe maybe it happened. Toby Keith didn't like the light it painted him in, and Chris Christopherson also was like, and I don't want to seem like a guy who's like hair trigger. We'll just say that it didn't happen. But he didn't say it didn't happen. He said, I don't remember that. Oh, And then he says okay. his wife does. Okay. Well, I mean, that's interesting. Thickens. Yeah. It, it, it does. Well, now we've talked ourselves into believing it again and making it I do. Hit I'm on, <laughs> yeah. I do believe it. I mean, because again, dude, again, how fucking crazy would it be yeah. for Ethan Hawke <laughs> right. to make this shit the fuck up? Right. Also, it sounds like some shit that would have happened. Like, I will say no. Again, I believe it. it. Drew's right. Okay, but I I'm just gonna say devil's advocate because I know you know. Uh, again, I he wouldn't mind me saying this. You know, Earl knows both parties personally, right. and Earl told me straight up that it was bullshit and never happened. Now, of course, he wasn't there that night. Toby right. Toby Keith would also tell Earl that it didn't happen, and if Christopherson mm -hmm. doesn't remember it or whatever, then he would have told Earl that. So that don't necessarily change anything. But Earl told me like point blank that 
it was bullshit. But but again, Earl has the same like all Earl has is the same information we all have, which was Chris Christopherson and Toby Keith both denied right. it. Right. That's all Earl. Like again, it's not like like you said, if Earl had been there, it'd been one thing. Right. Dude, this shit fucking happened. <laughs> this shit fucking happened. And, and Chris again, Christopherson Chris didn't deny it. He says he yeah. Can't that's what I'm remember saying. Remember that. Dude, uh, Christopherson was having like a brief moment of senility or he has was changed his medication because I'm sure that he suffers depression. I know he's an alcoholic for a long time. He, Dude, this 100% happened. it's the happened. coolest fucking response to, did you threaten yeah, and right. punk out one of the <laughs> yeah, right. alleged badasses of country? I don't music? know. Well, I really remember. Why don't you ask my wife? Hey, hey, just another day, man. Happens all the time. I've forgotten more up-and-coming country artists that I've threatened to fucking murder than you'll ever do in your life. <laughs> yep, I'm for it, man. I think it happened. All right. Well, uh, it's about that time. Okay, well, uh, hey. Uh, go to TreyCrowder.com, everybody. Uh, get your tickets. Send me on the solo tour. We're already booking some more well-read dates in the fall, too. So That's true. That'll be coming down true the Morgan pike. TrueMorganComedy.com. And uh, you can... Uh, you can go to Corey, CoreyRyanForcer.com to see a lot of my stuff and also uh, follow my uh, newsletters thing at uh, CoreyWritesForYou.com. And we'll see you next time. Shkew. Hey, y'all hang out for a second. Okay. Wait, do we need to sing? Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. And tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night and ski. Corey, do you like fancy stuff? Uh, do you mean like having a sit-down dinner at a wedding instead of a buffet style? No, fancier than that. Uh, do you mean like having a horse that knows how to dance? <laughs> fancier still. Oh, uh, uh, do you mean like uh, wearing a powdered wig, not because you got male pattern baldness, but because you got syphilis from banging a bunch of peasant pussy? That's exactly what I mean. I do like stuff like that. Well, if you like stuff like that, you're going to love Putting On Airs, the new podcast where two hillbilly pieces of trash talk about all things fancy people. Like, subscribe, download, tell all your friends, leave us a five-star review. We sure would appreciate you.